uh, today's gathering as a Malaysian, I feel very embarrassed. I feel very sad that we are gathering here regards to such an issue. There, are, there were many families broken due to this kind of unlawful conversion matters. We already have unilateral conversion issues. Now, on top of it, we have this kind of discrete conversions which is happening in the schools. Today, when we see, this happened on the 1st of June, this video by Fidos Wong, huh, happened on 1st of June. And it's already 11 days. We have released press statements since then. Until today, Ministry of Education, AG's Chambers, or PDRM, or even the Prime Minister, there's no statement coming out from them at all. All has been totally ignored. And we, as a citizen, concerned citizen of Malaysia, the NGOs have to gather here to bring up such matters. This has not been happening just lately or this particular Fidos Wong video, actually. This has been happening for a very, very long time. Just that, it happens that Fidos Wong vocally, okay, vocally said it out in a video because now they have become very bold because nothing can be done to them. They are totally untouchables. I have to use the word, they are totally untouchables. If you look at it in Sabah, 2015, a man with, who has uh, four children, his eldest daughter, age of 16, converted to Islam. He's a rubber tapper. He's staying quite a distance, trusted the school, trusted the teachers, but yet the daughter was converted discreetly without the knowledge of the parents. Another case also happened in Sarawak, 13 years old, converted in Sarawak. Okay, this is 2015 news. Huh? Another one, 2023. My associate here, Mr. Arundhar Sami, was handling the case. A boy was told to convert so that he, he can become a better football player or he will be recognized. All right. And 11 years old boy converted this year. Uh, this one happened six years back, sorry. Six years back. 11 years old boy converted. How are they converting? Huh? this young minus, and, and they are coming up with an explanation saying that they did a research, they wanted to become an, uh, a, a Muslim, basically. This is another one. Ibu Bapa Christian Galisa, Islam Nyuso Maso, Kaskola. Another news. Parents are living in fear. They are very afraid of what is happening. Now, coming back to uh, what Fidos Wong is saying here, uh, this is uh, regards to his counter statement uh, from my press statement. Okay, okay. it's hypocritical to poeticize the conversion of minors to Islam as the same questions are not posed about conversion to other religions. Okay, I might be a Hindu or I might be a Christian. My, ch my, my children in school or even the parents say they want to convert to maybe Christian or Buddhism or Taoism. Let's say they converted or, uh, at the age of below 18 with the concern of the parents. Fine. But after the age of 18, if the particular child don't want to be a Christian, wants to be a Hindu, or don't want to be a Hindu, wants to be a Christian, there's no problem. There's, you can exit. But in Islam, can you exit? Let's be frank. Court cases after court cases, it's all recorded in the press. It's all in the court. People who want to come out from Islam, they have to go to court, they have to go to counseling, they go, to, they go through a lot of uh, issues. That is why there's a lot to it. Below 18 should be under the control of the parents. This is what the law is saying. But here, the parents are trusting the school, trusting the teachers, because a, a pupil is spending almost more, more than half a day in the schools, extra co curriculum activities and all that. Non-Muslim parents are doing two jobs, basically, in Malaysia. That is frank, huh? I'm telling you, because I'm an NGO, I know. People don't have time to check on their children because they have trust on the schools and on the, on, on the teachers. But here, they are discreetly converting them. And these issues, there are more, actually. There are more which these are only the ones which are recorded. What about the ones which are not recorded? I have a friend who called me and told me in a kindergarten, they were teaching the son. He's, he's my own personal close friend. He has to uh, take him out of the kindergarten and change him out. Because he's reciting Quranic verses at home, a kindergarten boy. 
Another case which came to me was a standard one student saying Bismillah before taking the meal. So this is happening. But I told them, lodge a police report, go to the school and report about it. We never brought it up. But this is happening, okay, a lot, rampantly. I'm just showing you whatever is recorded. But the one which are not recorded, many cases. I personally spoke to two uh, students from Polytechnic, non-Muslim students. They approached me, they told me that they need to attend Charama Islam at 10 p.m. at night in the Polytechnic. If they do not enter for that Charama, their marks will be deducted. This happened a few years back, so I told them, please report. We want to bring it up. But they are so afraid because they are studying there, they are students, and of course, their studies will be affected. So this is happening a lot, like I said, all right? And furthermore, when I notice why these people are fighting that very close schools must be shut down, because of this, they want to go in and do, conduct all these illegal activities. So my question is, what is happening to Malaysia? How are uh, parents going to sleep peacefully or sending their children to school when all these secrets and, and lies, they are, they are asking, they are teaching the children to lie to their parents and to do it behind their parents. Is this ethics? What kind of uh, unethical thing they are teaching? What kind of moral is this? We all respect the federal constitution. Article 3 of the federal constitution has stated very clear, okay, this, the religion of the federation is Islam. But of course, Anyone has the choice after the age of 18, if they want to go, go and convert into the religion of Islam, that's up to them. But why are they brainwashing the young children from school? Because they know they're easy to be molded, easy to be lured and brainwashed. This is what is happening. You can see from Yadim, they got black and white. Why the government is keeping quiet about it? If the government is keeping quiet about it, for me, or for anyone, a lay person, when we look at it, they are okay with it, they are agreeing, they are condoning it.